never been done before episode. We don't know who it is that's actually dead. It's going to be amazing. It really is. I don't actually know what's going on. I'm really confused. Just as confused as you are, actually. I'm so excited to be part of this massive storyline and working with five wonderful actresses. I can't just... EastEnders star Tracy Ann Oberman connects with Rylan after he missed an interview with Israel's Eurovision contestant. Amid pro-Palestine protests, BBC defends bipolar storyline in EastEnders. ITV presenters warned on product placement. Eurovision semi-finalists announced. EastEnders drama escalates as Suki strategizes to protect secrets, and fans criticize show's similarity to Coronation Street storyline. Following his no show for the Eurovision interview with an Israel competitor, the BBC EastEnders star gets in touch with Rylan. Pro-Palestine demonstrators have disrupted the Eurovision Song Contest, demanding that Israel's participation be disqualified. The contest is taking place this weekend. Following reports that Rylan Clark had omitted an interview with Israel's act in the Eurovision Song Contest earlier in the week, an EastEnders star has shared the specifics of her conversation with the contestant. On social media today, Tracy Ann Oberman, best known for her roles as Valerie Lewis on Channel 4's Friday Night Dinner and Chrissy Watts on EastEnders, spoke about having spoken with Ryland following rumors that he was making a stance by declining to do an interview with Israel's Eden Golan. Yesterday, supporters of Israel's Eden on Eurovision flocked to social media to complain that the presenter had a snub to her. Although he pretended to be a bellhop in the hotel elevator and conducted interviews with several competitors, Eden apparently was not given that chance. A voice may be heard in the interview tape of Eden questioning the singer as she enters the elevator by herself. One fan posted their conjectures about possible outcomes, saying, not Ryland declining to participate in Eden Golan's elevator interview. We did not stand this. In the midst of the uproar, Ryland has defended the contest elsewhere. Malmo is doing an amazing job of hosting, he said on Good Morning Britain. Co-host Scott Mills said, It does feel a little different, but it's about the music and the joy that we have at Eurovision every single year. It's a song contest, it's all about the music, and that's what we're here for. Throughout the whole week, the two have dominated UK conversation and coverage. Eden, along with Armenia, Austria, Estonia, Georgia, Greece, Latvia, Netherlands, Norway, and Switzerland, advanced to the final at last night's semi-final. Albania, Belgium, Czechia, Denmark, Malta, and San Marino all advanced, but they were all unable to secure a last spot before this weekend's major match, which will take place live from Malmo on Saturday night. BBC upholds the bipolar plot of EastEnders, Daily TV Roundup. In response to criticism that bipolar disorder sufferer Jean Slater was mistreated and portrayed as a crazy person, the BBC has defended an EastEnders plotline about her. Critics of the storyline expressed their disapproval in writing, citing the unrealistic depiction of the sickness. The plot involved manipulative Michael Moon framing Gillian Wright's character Jean for stealing, leading the rest of the square to believe she was about to have a nervous breakdown. 107 people expressed their opinions in writing, and many more did the same on Twitter. One reader commented, I'm really disgusted and offended by how EastEnders portrays Jean as a crazy person when she is just bipolar, while another remarked, it irritates me so much when Jean is treated this way sometimes. Bipolar equals subhuman, it seems. It doesn't. A BBC spokesperson stated, It is important to note that Jean Slater is not intended to be representative of everybody with bipolar disorder. There's no indication that Jean's disease is the cause of any of her traits, instead, we portray each character as an individual with unique thoughts and behaviors. In order to be as truthful as possible about Jean's bipolar disorder, her medication, the effects it has on her and people around her, and attitudes and prejudices towards her, we collaborate closely with a variety of professionals in the mental health area. A total of 107 complaints from more than 16 episodes have been filed with us. The plot was always about Michael's manipulation of Jean, not her bipolar illness. Additionally in today's news. Presenters on ITV have received warnings for product promotion on the network. As a brand ambassador for Debenhams, Lorraine and fashion guru Mark Hayes has allegedly come under fire for favoring the retailer in goods on the show. Chef Gino DeCampo and Holly Willoughby have also been unflagged for donning clothes from their own very collection. Magic shows on ITV and the BBC have been cancelled. 
Rumor has it that, the magicians and, Penn and Teller, fool us will not be coming back to television due to declining viewership. Russell Brand blasted the Olympics on American television. He made an appearance on Conan O'Brien's talk show and declared, I am from England and I like it. However, when it comes to organization, everything will go horribly wrong. People will be tripping over objects and things catching fire, as it starts to rain, the queen will fart. Spoilers for EastEnders, Suki fears being hospitalized a threat to murder in secret is Denise. Suki devises a fresh plan in response to recent occurrences. Some readers may find it distressing to read about the trauma to mental health in this article. Suki Panasar, following Denise Fox's sectioning under the Mental Health Act, will give priority to protecting the six secrets in next week's episode of EastEnders. After her family was alerted that Denise was exhibiting indications of psychosis, Denise became persuaded that the devil was pursuing her and was admitted to the hospital. Stacy Slater, who covered up Keanu Taylor's murder at Christmas alongside Denise, Suki, Linda Carter, Kathy Cotton, and Sharon Watts, is one such resident who is aware of this condition. Additionally, Jack Branning, Denise's husband, and Stacy have been having an affair. In later moments, Jack will revert to Stacy. Jack turns to his partner for solace when Denise won't let him see him. When Denise's daughter Chelsea Fox discloses that her mother isn't doing as well in the hospital as Jack had her believe, his daughter Amy Mitchell becomes unhappy. Suki is furious with Stacy in the meantime for putting them all in danger by contacting the doctors regarding Denise. Suki isn't persuaded by Stacy's insistence that Denise doesn't know where the missing murder weapon is. Suki invites Stacy to get cozy with Jack so they can talk about any information Denise could be sharing while she's in the hospital. However, before Jack visits Denise, Stacy uses the chance to tell him to ignore any ramblings from Denise because she might divulge that she assisted in burying Keanu's body. Will Denise, though, be honest with anyone? And are the blood on their hands making the six into stranger versions of themselves, as Suki and Kathy, for example, show no mercy for Denise? Fans of rival soap operas relate the Lola lookalike twist to the similar remarks made by EastEnders. After Lola's resemblance emerged in a fresh twist on the sex worker plot, viewers of the BBC One soap opera EastEnders have accused the show of copying a plot point from rival ITV serial drama Coronation Street. Supporters of rival soap opera Coronation Street claim that a plot point from EastEnders was lifted verbatim from the BBC program. Fans recently witnessed the appearance of Nadine, a newcomer who attracted Jay's attention because of her striking similarity to his late wife Lola. Despite her disclosure that she works as a sex worker, the two are growing closer. Fans, however, are seeing parallels between the incident and a narrative about Daniel and Nikki over on the cobbles, where Daniel had recruited sex worker Nikki to dress like his late wife Sinead and cuddle him in bed while he was grieving for Sinead. One fan questioned, why is the EastEnders Jay and Nadine the Lola lookalike storyline giving me Daniel and Nikki, dressing up in Sinead's clothing, storyline vibes in Corey? The fake Lola story has been done so many times before on soap operas, was only done with Daniel and Corey, said another in agreement. So this is the exact same story Corey did with Daniel after Sinead died, wrote a third. A fourth person said, EastEnders really doing the same storyline Corey did with Daniel and Sinead. Try a bit harder. In Tuesday's episode, Jay took Nadine out for a drink at the Albert and apologized for leaving her without warning. The two then set their differences aside. Jay declined Nadine's invitation to return to her later, even though she was trying to woo him. An inebriated Jay accepted Nadine's business offer to stay over for free if they avoided having sex. Then he was spotted in bed with her, acting like it was Lola. In another instance, Suki went to the Albert with Ravi in order to surreptitiously film his confession, however, she was forced to end their meeting when an inconvenient call from the prison reported that Kirat had been attacked. When Suki understood that Ravi was to blame, she paled, and he threatened to hurt her family even more if she didn't remain silent. Suki begged Denise to assist in permanently locking up Ravi, but Denise declined out of concern for her family's security. Suki rashly admitted to a shocked nugget that she thought Ravi might have killed Ranveer out of revenge. Please subscribe our channel.